a mattress in there. And uh, I'd lay in there and that damn train would be coming from way off. And just screaming. You'd hear that whistle. Screaming. And then getting closer because he'd, he'd have to pull his whistle at every station, at every uh, intersection. Mm -hmm. and, and, it, and it was just so magical in making this sound. And then it would then you'd hear it coming closer and closer, and then, then it'd start to rumble, and then it would just shake. Yeah, and that chuck and chuck and chuck. Yeah. Chuck and chuck and chuck. Well, they were hauling. They, they wow. wasn't chuck and chuck and chuck and <laughs> They were hauling. <laughs> and it'd go screaming through there with their whistle going. Yeah. And then it'd go on up the hill, and then you'd lose the sound of it. But it was, it was something. I always looked forward to that. One thing led to another, and, and Bobby Fakerquist threw Wayne into a mud hole up there, out there. And uh, he had something white that was on his lip, on his lower lip. And I thought Bobby had knocked a tooth out. <laughs> and Mom was working, it was during, of course, during the war, and Mom was working at the mill, and so Wayne and I were home alone. So I rushed him back over to the house and put him in the bathtub and washed all that mud off of him and checked to see what that was on his face. And it was just, I don't know, just that piece of crud. But it scared me to death. I don't know whether he remembers that or not. No, but I do remember climbing the tree out in the back of the house there. And, uh, Was it you that you fell out of the tree? Yeah. Well, broke your arm. Yeah, those were those big tall trees out by the alley. Yeah. And they were, I don't know how far apart they were, but I'd get out there and climb one of them and then jump over and catch the limb on the yeah. other one. Missed it one day. Yeah. So John didn't cry, I cried for him. <laughs> <laughs> Because we were again home alone. How old were you boys? We were. I was nine and he was six when we moved yeah. over there. That's we were over there. We were over there then for two years. Because when I went in, well, well no, we were there long, longer than that. Because uh, I went fifth and sixth grade. Well, when we first moved there and then went to junior high, we lived there until uh, the year that I went and. Moved from junior high to uh, high school. We moved, but moved up on fishing. Yeah. Yeah. In those days, that was World War Two. Yeah. And, and the women were working at the mill and doing all that stuff, like the Rosie the Riveters. And we would make those. But we were in the wheat belt, and so the flour mills and all were of utmost importance to the war effort. That's why my dad never went in, he was never drafted, he was too old, number one. Had two kids. Had two kids. He kept trying to enlist, and he was also the assistant superintendent at the mill, and they thought he was more valuable there doing his work. And he said, if I don't go, my grandkids will call me a CO. <laughs> <laughs> that was a conscientious objector. Oh. <laughs> but nobody ever thought to think about it. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you can go. You hitchhiking from San Diego to go visit Uncle John, and I didn't get to hear where Uncle John was. He, he didn't hitchhike from San Diego, he hitchhiked from Nevada. From Nevada? Was, was I in Nevada at that time? Yeah. Okay, I was in Hawthorne, Nevada. Yeah. And then where was Uncle John? He was in Oakland, California at the Oak Knoll Military Hospital. Navy Hospital. Yeah. Oakland Navy Hospital. And you had, you were in the Navy too, but you yeah. had time off? Yeah, I had a weekend off. I haven't had a 72 hour and I had I had emergency room duty that, that weekend at the hospital. Okay. And uh, so when I got there, it was late at night. I'm not out late. Yeah. 
11 or whatever, it was dark and John was busy, so that's when he put me on the gurney and strapped me on it and, and he forgot to put the damn brakes on the thing and every time I made a little move, it goes <laughs> roll, roll across the floor. And he was so busy, he didn't come in there and check on me very often. And, uh, and when I put him on there, Wayne said, they're going to, now they'll wheel me off surgery someplace, oh. you know, so, whether I want it or not. <laughs> but we made it. Hmm? He was off the next morning, and I don't remember what we did. I don't remember what we did. I don't remember either. Um, but we just had some good brother time, that's all. We've always been good brothers. Good, I've always been good brothers. Good story. When I got out of high school, I was going out. I went out to my first college for a year. But anyhow, I started dating a girl that was still in high school. <clears throat> and I guess I, we dated until I went into the Navy. And so the first Christmas, she gave me a picture. You know, like an eight by ten mm -hmm. or whatever. And I had it sitting on the bedside table, her little kibbutz to sit there by the bed. Every evening when Wayne came in, he'd turn face down on the kibbutz. <laughs> <laughs> Well, do we know if it was because he was jealous or because he didn't like he her? He didn't like her. <laughs> didn't like her. I thought my brother deserved that. She <laughs> was homely as a nut catch. Anyhow, I guess we've been dating about a year now. And her mother always, whenever we were introduced to her, her mother always introduced me as her son-in-law. Ooh. And uh, so when I went in the Navy, I had to go out to railroad, Rock Island Railroad Depot to go take to go to Kansas City for my physical. And I said, uh, I think maybe you ought to give me my glass ring back. That uh, a lot of things can happen between now and the time I'm back, and so then we'll see how things work out. That was the end of that adventure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she lived right across the street in Carolyn. Yes. And Ronnie was telling me. <laughs> Ronnie was telling me yesterday. He said, "Cause Carol's Ronnie." And this girl's little brother is Kenny Bob, and Ronnie and Kenny Bob were always together. And what is Ronnie six years younger than you, or eight years younger? Four. Four years. Four younger. years younger than I. So that would have meant that. Uh, well, I was, I was twenty at the time. Uh, but he he was saying that he and and Kenny Bob would come and. Try and peek in the windows of that Model A Ford that I had. Watch them spooning. Yeah. Get them spooning. <laughs> yeah. And I apparently never noticed that. Apparently you were too busy. <laughs> yeah. I must have had other things on my mind. Yeah, I think you did. <laughs> <laughs> and she, she babysat Tammy. No, Tammy was born when when Deanna. yeah, Deanna. Was Deanna. Yeah, because because Tammy and, and and you and Debbie are all the same age. Uh huh. Well, Tammy's well, younger. younger. Tammy's fifty-eight. Tammy's younger than I am. Yeah, she would be because Debbie. I was coming to get Debbie for ice cream. And right. When you guys when got, we got married, when you got married, she was yeah. about two years old. Yeah. I bring her back just crashed. Uh, 
I'd bring Debbie back just trashed. <laughs> ice cream all over her face and down her throat. And her clothes, yeah. Janet would always have her dressed real nice and <laughs> proper. And he had a Volkswagen that come, well, he had, he had a red Mercury convertible for a while. And so. That's what he had when we first married. And so, I suppose they'd head off down the street with Debbie's hair flying in the air. <laughs> we never forget that. Nope. Nope, she couldn't. She was standing there crying when we drove off on our honeymoon, but she couldn't come to the house. <laughs> And Janet was pregnant with Johnny. And Johnny, she was. Sorry. Yeah. I haven't heard that about burying the clock. You'll have to start over. Oh, he had this big, big round clock, that big around, that thick, that sat on a bedstead. Wind up, noisy as the devil. And I got to where I couldn't stand that thing anymore. So I took it out, out in the backyard and with a shovel, and I buried the damn thing. <laughs> he swore more than once to go back over there and dig around there and see if he could find it. Did you find it? <laughs> You didn't know where it was? I finally learned it was right up behind the utility room. But well, I guess I think it was probably an add-on for that, that porch out there where the washing machine was. <laughs> Did you ever get revenge? I don't remember retaliating on that. <laughs> Dad probably sitting back grinning about it. Well, Kathy asked me not, not long ago how, what, how, what, who Jason take, took after. And I said, well, he takes after me. And he's pretty quiet. He's a lot quieter than I am. Doesn't mean he won't get going on one of these days, but, but he uh, basically is a lot like me, where Tyler is like the Hannenberg family. Is he? And uh, he um, just wanted to know if I was like my dad. I said, oh, absolutely. Everybody told me that. <laughs> Everybody told me I was like, you're just like your dad. You're just like your dad, over and over, they'd say. Because he was always kidding with people, and he had all the girls always loving him. Yeah. All the he could, he could. sisters and nieces, and they all loved him. He could sit and tell you a story with just as straight a face as you could think, and you'd believe every bit of it, and there wasn't a bit of it that was true. <laughs> <laughs> Well, one time, one time when we were out in Oregon, <clears throat> I was in the back seat of the car, and, and Frank and Dad were in the front seat of the car, and Frank was Frank was driving, and we were parked at the, at the curb, and in the curb we parked, run a bumper in, and Dad was sitting there watching some gal walking down the sidewalk, and Frank. Frank, and then, of course, the windows are all rolled down. And Frank, uh, in a little elevated voice, says, Hey, babe. And my dad was sitting there, just watched her walk down the street. So she naturally thought it was him that was make, trying to make time with her. And so, <laughs> hey, babe. <laughs> yeah, it's too bad that we didn't have a chance to take Kathy over to see Uncle Frank when yeah, he was there and went yeah. over to visit him. Frank looked, looked yeah, Frank and they, Dad looked a lot. Oh, they looked, hell, they were damn near twins. I, <clears throat> I hadn't seen him in years. 
And when I went back down there and took that day and went to visit him, um, I just sat there and I told John later, I said, he was just like sitting there talking to Dad. <clears throat> just like sitting there. And he'd go down there and give the waitresses at the local restaurant a bunch of shit. You know? mm -hmm. <laughs> They'd give it right back to him. They were always pulling somebody's chain. That old one for Frank. They were. Yeah. The, the stories they'd tell down at Reese when, they, when those boys were growing up. Like, they were they were little hellions and they'd go and tell tell their mother what they'd done, this and that and the other thing, and she'd she'd tell grandpa, she'd say, You need to get those boys in here and get them straightened out. He said, You they they're just raising hell and she'd say he'd he just sit there and say, grin at her and say he said, Oh Dutch, he said, They're just boys. <laughs> Oh, Grandpa Hughes. He was just a mild, good-natured guy. Yeah, it was and she, she was always, always, always harping at him. Yeah, and he just let it run, just grin and let it go. <laughs> never argued. He never argued with her. No, no, I never heard him raise his voice. No, he'd just look at her and grin or look at us and, and grin. she was always fussing around his dogs, and, and she had half a dozen cats. And she, <laughs> and, and, <laughs> that was all right. <laughs> Yeah, he was a mellow old fella. Big old farmer hands, and he'd take a hold of my hand when we'd go up. Because not only he had his, his cows and pigs and chickens and everything else, then he had, he was a janitor at the local high school. So I'd always get up there and... Hi, did you have dinner? drinking water at the house. There wasn't any running water in the house. And so the water that was in the wash basin on the screened in porch was out of the cistern. But every evening when he came home from the schoolhouse, he had two five gallon buckets of water that he could bring down the schoolhouse. Wow. And so the bucket that was sitting on that wash stand out there on the porch was the drinking water. And that drinking cup in it with a long handle on it. Yeah, everybody drank out of the same dipper. And I'd catch y'all from, from Grandma because I'd take that dipper and throw it out because the chickens were outside there. <laughs> so, you were giving the chickens John water? Junior's, John Junior's out there moistening my water. And <laughs> but the chickens sure scattered when I'd throw oh, that water through that screen. <laughs> yeah, I'd just throw it through the screen. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that sister water, man, did it have a... Hard rainwater taste. Oh yeah. Whew. And you look down that sister and there's those frogs and, and all other kinds of critters. <laughs> all manners. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Snakes. Yeah. Spiders. I drank it. I drank oh, it. Huh? I drank it. One community towel there hanging on the screen uh -huh. the porch. And one wash basin with what they call uh, lime soap that they made themselves. Li uh, lime. 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 lime soap. Lime soap. When they when they butchered hogs, they they had this big iron kettle, mm -hmm. and so they would put fat when they bit took the fat off the hogs. They would throw it in that, and, and they were making uh, render in that. I rendering the fat, it. and so then we'd sit sat around that kettle and eat the cracklings in when they when they got towards the end of the cooking on it. Grandma then make that lye soap out there in, in the milk house. <clears throat> was, that, was that Vern that was uh, engineer of the switch train down there? Was that Vern? Poke. Poke, Poke. And that's what I said earlier, Poke. Mm -hmm. but I used to go down there and be able to ride the engine with yeah, Poke all day long, Poke. moving train cars around. And and the reason he was poked was because everybody said he was always pokey and you never he was just laid back. Yeah, poke. Pretty small world around there for that bunch that clan. Yeah. That's exactly what that it was. was just I guess it was a booming little town during the oil boom in that area. And then the railroads came through there. Yeah. Of course the railroad run right by side grandma grandma and grandpa's feet. 
Yeah. So you'd lay there in that big old feather bed. Now, Wayne and I'd sleep on that feather bed that folded out from a couch. I right? could think of one. Horse hair couch. Uh, it was an old horse hair couch. Yeah, in that feather bed mattress, yeah. feather mattress. And it looked good and it felt good when you first got into it, but by morning it was flatter than a board. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was, there was homemade quilts on there. That yeah. But it was. Wool, scratchy as hell. Oh, yeah. Scratchy wool. Plus, over your pants, you know, a lot of the homemade pants and stuff were wool. Yeah. Made out of wool, and I, I had to wear pajama bottoms. I, yeah, I did too. I, I wore pajama pants. bottoms, and them. They were too itchy. Richard's grandma made for me. That was another reason I quit going to church. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't want to put those wool pants on. <laughs> <laughs> and. And that was where Wayne's favorite rooster was. <laughs> Damn rooster. <laughs> yeah. Grandma named all her cats after biblical people. Nicodemus yeah, there was Nicodemus. And, and, I don't know what I'm talking about. Elijah. Yeah, who knows. I just remember Nicodemus. Yeah. Titus. Titus was one of them. But the house, the house was heated with coal, coal stoves. And the floors were linoleum. So if you got up in the middle of the night and had to go out and pee off the porch with it, those coal, those coal linoleum, oh, linoleum no floors. Oh, no froze your little Oh, place. yeah. <laughs> But I always just went out and peed off the porch because I wasn't going to go out through that chicken yard after dark. Well, I'm going to tell mom. <laughs> you can tell mom. <laughs> well, we, I was always up first thing in the morning when I, I'd hear Grandpa in there stoking up the coal stove yeah. in the living room. And then when I'd smell that food cooking in the kitchen, Grandma would have that. Kerosene wood, stove. Wood, wood stove. Well, she had that, with, and she had that little kerosene stove as well beside it. I can remember some of I can yeah. remember the smells. I can, I can always smell, smell Every it. time I smell kerosene, I think grandma's kitchen. Yeah, because it was all, that's all they had was kerosene lamps. The other one, they like too. Yep. Yeah. I don't remember grandma. Hughes with her flat irons, but I remember Grandma Smith with her flat irons, and she'd set them on that, on that, uh, that was a coal stove, wasn't it? Yeah. When they lived up. Yeah. Stone. You know, in the summertime, 100 degree Kansas days, and the stove roaring in there. So she could heat the iron side. Yeah. And she had a she had a Maytag washing machine that was had a gasoline engine on it, <laughs> and it sat on her back porch. And it was an enclosed porch, a little little enclosed porch. And the engine had flexible hose that came off of the exhaust, and then there was a little muffler on the end of it, and she'd just throw it out the back door and bounced around out there on the ground a little bit. Washing, washing machine. machine was running. But that motor, you started it by just in here and you that starter on that motor. Prime to prime it, yeah. is that what you were doing? Uh, choke yeah. it and stand there and pump it and crack it. <laughs> you old son of a bitch, I told you an hour ago to get out there and feed them goddamn chickens. <laughs> 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 yeah, there were the girls were, were two different sets of them. Some of them were real nice and proper, yeah. and the others, two or three others, yeah. would just cuss up a storm. <laughs> but we loved the ones that cussed as much as we loved the ones. Yeah, that I did. really liked Noni. I just, yeah, but I'd, yeah, I'd head down Noni's just as soon as we get to east of them. Yeah. Because the only let me build a big fire down there in the woods, so even in the summertime. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they had three boys and two girls. 
And those three boys slept in the same bed on a porch that had been added onto the back of the house. And the kitchen sink sat on some kind of plywood uh, two by four structure, but it just was piped out of the side of the house and the water ran out on the ground. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, nothing was insulated. No. So hot in the summer and cold in the winter. Oh yeah, it was all was Well, hell, we'd be in bed with three old hound dogs and four cousins. Oh, with Chapman, yeah. All of us in one bed. Yeah. <laughs> And when we'd go up, when we'd go up Myrtles, we'd all sleep on pallets. And you know, I, I can remember most of the time I was under under the dining room table in my pallet when we'd go up there. They lived up there on Windy Hill or some yeah. whatever it was. <laughs> yeah, man. <clears throat> well, there's two of those kids still alive. Everybody did well. Everybody yeah. came out well. What about shoes? I always hear stories, especially during World War II, there was a shoe shortage, and sometimes people would have two shoes that didn't even match well, each other. Was it not really that well, bad? Well, folks really couldn't afford shoes. Wayne and I went barefooted all summer long. We get new shoes when school started. Yeah. We get a new pair of shoes. It's like that Dolly Parton. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> you all gave them there a brand new pair. <laughs> yeah, we fall for Christmas. School, we get brand new overalls and brand new shoes, high top shoes. We were all wore striped overalls to school, the grade school. And homemade shirts that my mom made, all pressed nice. Yeah, she was real proud of her boys. Yeah. You better not say anything bad about my boys. <laughs> yeah. Remember, about four. Thank you, sir. Well, you deserved it. Okay. I'd say that he never spanked me. But he, but he would never hit us with his hand because he had a pretty good temper. And he said, "Mom told me later." He said. To, to, he said, I'm not going to hit him with anything by hand. And he said, I'm afraid I'll hurt him. And, and our uncle, Paul, mom's brother, he used to whip Jack with it, with his belt. Oh. Jack said when he was really mad, he used, he, he used it with where the buckle it hit him. Paul and something. We were just talking about them the other day. When we were up at Cripple Creek. Well. We'd taken Mom up there for the melodrama, and I got pretty tired of melodrama. And I'd gone out to walk around Cripple Creek, did some air, and uh. Paul, I swear it is. And I walked around the corner, and there was Cynthia and Paul there at a little dance hall, square dancing, in a club they belonged to, that they traveled around to Colorado and neighboring states of Kansas for square dance thing. She was not my favorite aunt, that's for sure. She always thought she was hot shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he was always full of shit. Are they the ones that had twin girls? Yeah, yeah. Marley and I, they lived there with the Yeah. They when I, between my junior and senior high school, years in high school, I wanted to work with wheat harvest. <clears throat> and I went out to the extension office there in McPherson, I and Benny Wagley, and they didn't have any, anything available. And so I said, uh, they said, well, there's an extension office on out at Conway. Conway is the next town west of McPherson, isn't it? And so we hitchhiked on out to Conway, which is probably 50 or 20 miles west of McPherson. And they didn't have anything. There's, there's another couple of towns just about 20 miles apart, but it, we wound up in Lyons. And Paul and Cynthia lived in Lyons. And 
we went, we walked into the extension office and, and, and the guy said, no, we don't have anything available right now. And then this fellow came in. He said, I'm going out to Rush Center tomorrow and I need to take a couple of hands out there for my, to my brother because he's getting ready to cut wheat and, and he needs them right away. And that extension officer said, well, he said, I don't have anybody here but these two kids that are sitting here. And he said, they're not very big. And Benny and I are about the same age. And I forget what his name was. Anyhow, Ted Barron's brother said, well, he looked at me and he said, look at the arms on that boy. He said, he can shovel wheat all day long. <laughs> he said, I'll take them. And Benny said, I got to go home. Benny's dad was Benny's dad was a free Methodist, and, and he wouldn't let. He, he had seven kids, and he they couldn't go to the movies, they couldn't dance, they couldn't play cards. Right, right. And he said, if I don't get home before dark, he said, my dad'll just beat the hell out of me. <laughs> and so he he started hitchhiking back home, and I said, well, I'll go. And he said, well, he said. I'm not going out until tomorrow morning. And he said, is there some place here in Lyons where you could stay tonight? I said, yeah, I have an aunt and uncle that live in town. <clears throat> and so he took me out today. He said, oh, I know Paul. He said, uh, and he said, I know Paul and Santa. He said, I'll take you out too. <laughs> and so, we, I, I, when I got in and, and, and Ted's brother had left and, and, and Cynthia said, Do your folks know you're out here? <laughs> I said, no. She picked up the telephone, she called.